and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about internal resistance. Now internal resistance is something that is very unique to circuits and it's something to do with taking into account that inside a cell there is a chemical uh, sort of, it's chemical energy to electrical energy and that transfer isn't 100% efficient. And what internal resistance is representing is the energy that is lost within the cell of a battery um, to heat, etc., like that. And we refer to, because we're talking a lot about resistance, we do call, we say this energy loss is due to a resistance, an internal resistance of the cell itself. Now, what I've got here is I've got um, a circuit with a little resistor here, and this little resistor is representing the internal resistance of the cell itself. And the cell is represented by this dotty line here. This big R is representing the rest of the circuit, the resistance of the rest of the circuit. So that might just be two series resistors. It might be one resistor. It might be loads of parallel resistors or a mixture of all three. Okay. And so what I'm going to talk about is different uh, thing. I've got a switch here as well. And I'm going to talk about how if you start using voltmeters and ammeters, how you would get different readings. Now, at the moment, the switch is open, so it means that there's no current flowing. If I was to put a voltmeter across this battery here, I would only be measuring something known as the EMF. So when the switch is open, there is no current so the voltmeter here measures the EMF, also represented by this letter E, of the battery. And EMF stands for electromotive force. And this is going to be the potential that the electrons would have um, in this cell so it's the i almost like the ideal voltage here it's the ideal it's the the full amount of chemical energy that's going to be transferred here okay when we close the switch so when the switch is closed the current flows and when current flows does this resistor here and this resistor here start taking away that EMF? Now, Kirchhoff stated that in one loop, the potential that has been given to the circuit by this cell, the EMF, should be the you dissipated throughout any of the components in the circuit. So when the situation current flows, therefore. R and R will take potential. So I'm going to write a formula. It's going to be like an energy formula here. I am going to say that the potential from the cell, the EMF, equals, I'm going to call this big V, and I'm going to call this V of the resistor. Okay. So... <clears throat> big V plus the V of the internal resistor. Now, I have represented by this by just a normal series circuit. And what I'm talking about is the fact that this has a total current here of I. So if I wanted to find the individual V for the circuit here, it would be I times the R of that circuit. If I wanted to find it for the internal resistance, it would be I and then times that little resistor. So the EMF is the potential that the whole circuit gets plus the potential that that little resistor is taking away. It's wasting energy. So I can give you an example of this. Let's say the current was 2 amps. My EMF is 10 volts. The potential to my circuit was 8 volts. Find 
little r. So, I know 10 goes into the circuit, 8 plus i little r, 2 little r here, 2 equals 2 little r, r equals 1 ohm. So all internal resistance is, is this idea that the inside the cell of a battery is the, um, basically some, something wasting energy. Now, importantly, the voltmeter, when current is flowing here, the voltmeter measures the terminal potential difference. So this voltmeter is going to measure the voltage that is going to the rest of the circuit. It's measuring the voltage that's leaving the terminals of the battery itself. Now I'm going to show you now something we could do with a graph. So I've got the formula here that EMF is the potential to the circuit plus I little r. And I'm going to rearrange it here so I have V equals I r minus EMF. Now straight line graphs are some of the most powerful graphs that we use in physics. So I'm going to force this to be a straight line graph. So a straight line graph is Y equals MX plus C. So if I stuck this on the y-axis, the reason I'm going to put this on the y-axis is because it's something I can actually measure. I'm going to put my current on the x-axis, which means that this here would be my um, <clears throat> would be my um, oh wrong way around. I do apologise. I've rearranged it a little bit long wrong here. Let's change that here. So EMF. Uh, I've got V equals EMF minus IR. So let's start again. This on my y-axis. This on my x-axis. Which means this here is going to be my gradient. And this here is going to be my intercept. So as you can see, my gradient is actually a negative gradient. So if I actually draw this now, potential and current, because they're what I've stated to be on my y and my x, I would get a graph like that, where my intercept here would be my EMF, and the change in V over change in I would be my little resistance, my internal resistance. And what this graph is showing you is the more current, the less voltage that goes to the circuit. And that does make sense. The more current there is, the more this little resistor is going to take away because of V equals IR, Ohm's law. So the more current there is, the less voltage that will be going to the rest of the circuit. And that is internal resistance.